Hello guys, in today's video we're going to check out the top 5 floor standing speakers in the market for this year. I made this list based on my personal opinion and I tried to list them based on their price, quality, durability and more. To see the price and find out more information about these floor standing speakers, you can check out the description below. Also make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with the latest technology reviews. Ok, so let's get started with the video. At number 5, it's the KEF Q550. The Q550 by KEF is the smallest floor standing loudspeaker in the Q series that also comes at a reasonable price with impressive features and performance. So let's get straight into it and reveal what's so special about these speakers. Design wise, this time around, KEF has gone for a more contemporary and modern look but still manages to retain a traditional feel. To be more specific, the finish is made of some type of plastic film and it comes in either black or white. White it has a brushed texture to it and looks really good. Additionally, the bottom is fitted with feet using height adjustable spikes at the ends, enabling you to adjust the level on uneven floors. Also, the high quality speaker terminals accept anything from bare wire to spades or banana connectors. As on most KEF speakers, you'll find their distinguished UniQ driver handling the highs and mids of the Q550. In this case, a 5.25 inch coaxial mid-range tweeter. By storing the aluminium tweeter in the mid-range cone, you can optimize the time alignment between the two drivers and reduce any phase issues you'd normally get when you use a traditional tweeter and mid-range configuration. This also develops the omnidirectional response, which should mean that the sound stage and frequency response stays constant even if you move away from the recommended spot. The tweeter also appropriates a tangerine waveguide to minimize any interference between the tweeter and the mid-range driver. In addition, bass duty is handled by a 5.25 inch aluminium woofer and two 5.25 auxiliary bass radiators ABR, fitted with newly developed surround and suspension to ensure optimal control of the lower frequencies. As for the sound quality, well, it's always a treat to listen to KEF speakers and the Q550 is definitely no different. To be more precise, everything is placed where it's supposed to be within the soundstage and the relative sizes between the instruments are preserved. Bass instruments are never excessive to the point where they overpower the other instruments while also being agile enough to start and stop on a dime. Lead instruments like a violin, flute and electric guitar are reproduced with excellent dynamics and textures and also assist to demonstrate the high resolution of these speakers. It can play surprisingly loud too, despite its relatively small size. To conclude, if you're looking for a budget-oriented floor standing speaker that looks and performs premium, this could be your ideal choice. At number 4, it's the Q Acoustics 3050. The Q Acoustic 3050 is a pair of floor standing speakers that have been on the market for a couple of years, but due to their quality, people are constantly purchasing them. So let's jump into it and find out what the secret is behind their success. In terms of design, the Acoustic 350 look beautiful regardless of the colour edition. And if you ask us, the graphite looks especially good. That's the one that we're currently reviewing. Although, keep in mind that these speakers differ only in colour, the specs are all the same, so regardless of your choice, you'll love having these floor standing speakers. To continue, these speakers have well-built rounded cabinets that hold two-in-one concentric ring dome tweeters and a pair of 6.5-inch aramid fibre woofers, which we'll cover a little more in the next section. But visually speaking, they add even more beauty to the cabinets. Additionally, at the back there are dual five-way binding posts, so you can use them in order to buy amp your floor speakers. I'd also like to inform you that the black grill cloth that covers the top half of the front panel can be removed, so don't hesitate to do that if you want to achieve optimal results. But now let's talk about performance. These speakers can output loud and clear audio with minimum distortion, even if you set the volume right to the top. So when you compare this ability with the speaker's price tag, you have to realize this makes them extremely valuable. Furthermore, the speakers have a normal impedance of 60 ohms, a crossover frequency of 2.6 kHz, and a frequency response that stretches from 44 Hz to up to 22 kHz, so you can hear a strong and detailed sound. In addition, according to those who've previously purchased this model, these speakers have proven as highly capable when it comes to trebles, lows, and mids, highs, and bass, due to the fact that each of them is produced accurately, 
so you can hear every audio you want in depth. Overall, the Q Acoustics 3050 deserves your attention because it offers great value for the price. At number 3, it's the Klipsch RF7 Mark III. The Klipsch RF7 III floor standards masterfully portray everything and anything save for true subwoofer frequencies. If you're a music or cinema audiophile with the budget and the space for these, you should probably stick for the next couple of minutes to see what these speakers are made of. From a design perspective, each Klipsch RF7 III tower features one 90 degree by 90 degree track tricks horn, dual 10 inch spun copper ceramitalics woofers, and an enclosure wrapped in furniture grade wood veneers, while finish options include black ash, cherry, and walnut. Speaking of finish quality, four black ash set look really good, and the wood veneer surface is sturdy and attractive. Additionally, there are a lot of smart features molded into the speaker itself that make these towers as efficient and resonant free as possible, with the goal of making the whole system sound as natural as can be. Performance wise, the Klipsch RF7 III deliver outstanding clarity and transparency across a full range of frequencies and volumes, sounding just as good during casual listening as they do at reference volume madness. Also in the movie and TV show department, the Klipsch RF7 III floor standards perform fluidly. To be more specific, cast a multi-channel soundtrack at these speakers and with eight other speakers plus a sub, the whole room will feel more pressurized since film mixes manage to utilize the front left and right channels for music and larger sound effects like explosions and gunshots. However, my only remark regarding these speakers are their size, meaning they're a bit taller than I expected and depending on your sitting position, sometimes you may hear a touch of separation between the horde and the woofer. Moreover, the Klipsch RF7 III floor standing towers are strong, bold, understandable and clear, delivering a performance value that you can only find in high-end speakers that cost two or three times the price of these. To conclude, the Klipsch RF7 III's are definitely a must-have, and if you're looking for something similar, don't hesitate to purchase these, because they surely deliver more value than the price would convey. At number two, it's the SVS Ultra Towers. SVS is a well-known brand which has amazed users previously with their subwoofer. Still, with their SVS Ultra Towers, they managed to get to the top and be one of the best options for you to choose. From a design perspective, they're striking in their physical appearance, with their high-gloss piano black finish and chrome-accented drivers. Additionally, the speakers themselves are not your ordinary boxy affair, but preferably a sculptural collection of planes that narrow and slope to create an interesting geometric statement. To be more precise, the angles along with the cabinet's internal structure are designed in such a way as to break up or otherwise reduce standing waves and coloration, both inside and out. Now, because the Ultra Tower isn't wholly symmetrical through and through, its measurements are a bit all over the place, though its footprint is constant at just under 14 inches wide by 16 and a quarter inches deep. For your information, the Ultra Tower is 45 inches tall at its highest point, which is just above the topmost driver while weight is stated to be £75 each. Moving on, the front baffle plays host to a pair of 6.5-inch mid-range drivers with a 1-inch aluminium dome tweeter between them. Down toward the base of each Ultra Tower rest two 8-inch woofers, one on each side. In addition, around the back there's a single rear firing port, which further helps to augment the Ultra Tower's low-end performance. While in terms of connection options, you'll find two pairs of gold-plated 5-way binding posts. Performance-wise, the Ultra Tower's driver complement is good for a reported frequency response of 28Hz to 32kHz, with a nominal impedance of 8 ohms. Furthermore, sensitivity is stated to be 88 decibels, making the Ultra Tower proper for amplifiers and or receivers ranging in power from 20 to 300 watts or more. Last but not least, the SVS Ultra Tower can be configured in one of three ways, as a bipole or dipole speaker, or as two discrete speakers meaning it's possible to have a seven-channel setup from only five speakers. Overall, considering all this, the SVS Ultra Towers would make a great addition to your home, so if you're looking for something similar, this could be your best pick. At number one, it's the Sonus Faber Veneer 2.5. Sonus Faber Veneer 2.5s are high-end floor-standing loudspeakers that emphasize an innovative technical design, superb construction, spectacular appearance and great sound. Therefore, let's get straight into the action and reveal what makes these so special. 
To begin with, the floor standing veneer 2.5 is a 2.5 way treatment with Sonus Faber's own coated fabric tweeter and two 7 inch woofers, also by SF. The lower rolled off above 250 Hz. Additionally, the drivers are inset into a smoothly curved front baffle and shielded by a stiff but lightweight black grille, magnetically appended. A pattern at the bottom of the grille reveals the Sonus Faber logo stamped on the baffle, while below that at the bottom is the semi-rectangular slot port. Moving on, the side panels curve neatly around to meet a very slim rear panel, just wide enough to accommodate a staggered array of full multi-weight terminals. Also, the cabinet remains on a thick glass base plate that affirms four substantial spikes, the front pair nearly an inch longer than the rear, which tilts the entire cabinet back to align the tweeter with the deeper woofer diaphragms. To be more specific, this rake is maintained in the top panel, which has a glass inlay, and from the front slopes up toward the rear of the speaker, strikingly narrowing to a near point. Performance-wise, the capacity of the Veneer 2.5s present a balanced and integrated mid-range, and treble is improved when you use them as the main left and right speakers of a multi-channel array. Moreover, they reflect greatly with everything you can throw at them, and perform great with every system configuration that you can manage. They really offer an ear-opening experience, and their intelligibility and balance will make you relentlessly clear that you need to step up the quality of your current speakers to fully acknowledge modern high-resolution audio. To conclude, if you're looking for high-end floor-standing speakers that can perform great in every aspect, while they also come with many interesting features, then don't hesitate to purchase the Sonus Faber Veneer 2.5s because you won't regret your decision.